Well, hello. My name is Don Tipping. I'm here at Siskiyou Seeds in Williams, Oregon. We're in the Applegate Valley of Southwestern Oregon. And I would like to share with you a few uh, short tips on what you could be planting this time of year, early March here in Oregon, which would really apply to this general bioregion. And also uh, probably the simplest way of planting um, some seeds. So we have a small seed company, for those of you that aren't familiar with us, called Siskiyou Seeds. Uh, started here about 12 years ago, but I've been farming in this location for the last 25 years, growing seeds. And we're a family farm based organic seed company that focuses on bioregionally adapted, open pollinated, and mostly heirloom seeds. So the kind of things that you can be planting right now in this area is all your early cool season loving crops. I'm here in my greenhouse, propagation house. We already have onions going, uh, cabbages, broccoli, mustards, Chinese cabbage, lettuces, spinach, arugula, cilantro. Uh, in the ground, we've planted carrots and beets and radishes, but those are best direct sown, and peas as well. Some plants you wanna grow in in flats like this and I'll tour around a little bit with the camera when I'm done with this little section and other plants you want to plant directly in the ground because they don't respond very well to transplanting so I have a planting calendar on our website and in our catalog I'll put the link to which crops you should direct seed versus transplanting in the comment section below the video here I'll also put a link to our planting calendar and you may want to adjust your planting times if you're further north than us or further south. We're at 42 degrees north latitude here in southern Oregon. So um, we're just beginning to seed some of the heat loving crops like basil, tomatoes, peppers. Uh, we're holding off on cucumbers and zucchini and winter squash and melons until a little bit later mainly because those plants they grow quickly and uh, we run out of space in here. So if you're a home gardener and you have the space to do it and you feel like you can protect those plants from frost, you can get a jump start on it. But for here in Southern Oregon, our last frost is usually the end of May. So we're almost, we have three more months of potential frost. So we're just gonna focus on the cool season loving crops. There's a variety of different ways that we start seeds, but I'm gonna show probably the easiest way of particular if you're a new gardener is using these kind of uh, plug trays like this. And uh, these ones that are filled with soil are not really rigid enough to support themselves. So it's best to support them with a bottom tray, much like this. I personally don't use any of the self-watering trays. Um, these in the vernacular are called 10 by 20s. And as you guessed it, they are 10 inches by 20 inches. So to provide a little bit more stability, this is a highly specialized piece of wood it's about a quarter inch thick. I put it in the middle and what that helps to do is just keep the center from uh, sagging down under the weight of the soil and then if you don't put that piece of wood in there what I found is your edges don't get as evenly watered and sometimes you don't have very good germination and your, the water kind of runs down into the middle. So by doing that under the bottom of the tray it helps support it. So. I have another video that I'll put a link to about making your own potting soil. We make our own soil out of compost, sand, and eggshells with a little bit of powdered kelp for minerals. So I'm going to fill this tray with soil. Spread it out. And then uh, I learned a trick from a farmer a long time ago to drop it like that just once and that helps the soil to settle down uh, and make sure your your cells are all full so then I just take my fingers and I just make little indentations and it kind of depends on the seed that you're planting right now I'm gonna plant some zinnia seeds uh, but I would do about the same thing about quarter to half inch deep for lettuce spinach cilantro mustards, brassicas. Then I have my seed packet here and I make a little crease here so that when I tap it, the seeds kind of line up 
and I'll come towards the camera a little closer. You can kind of see how the seeds line up and you have a more accurate control of seeding. And I'm gonna aim for getting about two seeds in every cell because I wanna make sure that I'm using all the space I have efficiently and I'll thin them down to one seed per cell because no one likes watering and taking care of empty space that isn't giving you anything, so. Um, get this filled up here. I think this particular tray has 72 cells, uh, six by 12. There's a variety of different other ones. And we also make soil blocks and the uh, link about making our own potting soil will have an explanation of how to do that. But for a lot of folks, you're probably not going to invest in those tools or those techniques. But if you're really into it, that I think is a better way than using plastic trays because plastic doesn't last forever. Well, it does, but not in the way you want it to. So, almost done here. So then once I filled all my holes, I spread a little bit more soil over the top and cover them up. And then I label it. I always put the date uh, that I seeded it so that later I can check and see like, hey, when did I plant those? Uh, are they coming up or not? Like, so for instance, I just had a lettuce, but it was some old seed that I was wanting to grow seed of. It was actually seed from 2007 and unsurprisingly none came up but you'll never know unless you do that. But having the date on there helped me to determine like, hey, this has been in here for three weeks. It's just not coming up. So date's important. So that's there's our finished tray. And then I'll just you know, put it on one of our tables and water it and watch them grow. And then we'll be transplanting these zinnias out. We usually grow things in the greenhouse for about six to eight weeks. Um, gr being able to grow your own transplants has a lot of advantages because then you can prepare prepare your soil when the conditions are right and put your plants in the ground at the ideal uh, spacing and then not have any gaps. And also when you put those transplants in, they'll have such a jump start ahead of the weeds as opposed to direct seeding. Like if I were to seed these directly in the ground, the weeds would actually be probably germinating quicker and you really have to do some detective work to determine where your crop plants are. So hopefully that was helpful. And I wish you all the best on growing many beautiful and nutritious plants and sharing them with as many people as possible. All right, take care.